While one of the three leaking oil wells in the Gulf of Mexico has been capped now, people who live along the coast are preparing for the oil to come ashore. We have Fox team coverage tonight. Senior White House correspondent Major Garrett looks at a BP exemption from intense regulation prior to the spill. But first, we turn to correspondent Chris Gutierrez live in Venice, Louisiana, to tell us how the containment is going. In this constant race against time, state leaders in Louisiana say they can't afford to sit back and watch as the oil creeps closer to the state's vast marshlands. We're tired of waiting. Nobody else is doing this. We're going to do this. We put together detailed plans for every single parish going all the way to the Texas coast. The plan includes positioning this large jackup boat loaded with absorbent boom near sensitive areas that could soon see oil. The idea is to have local fishermen on board to help respond to those areas of concern because they know these waters better. And that's the way it should be. Our people devise the plan. Our people help to implement the plan. BP is saying the right things. I think execution is going to be very, very important. Meanwhile, BP's efforts to contain the spill are moving forward. Overnight, a robotic submarine managed to cap one of the three leaks. But BP says it did little to slow the estimated 210,000 gallons leaking into the Gulf each day. You still have the same amount of oil coming out of the two leaks as you did the three. But again, as I said, it makes it easier, easier for us to fight. This fight is now entering its second week. A short-term solution is to trap the oil with this concrete and steel dome structure. It should be at the spill site late tonight, but it could take up to 48 hours to lower it 5,000 feet to the seabed and then connect a series of pipes to funnel the oil into another vessel. This collection method has never been attempted in water this deep. For Louisiana, this is going to be a marathon, not a sprint. It's capping the leak, cleaning up the oil, and then repairing the damage to our wetlands. A sheen of thin oil has already been spotted around Louisiana's barrier islands, specifically the Chandelier Islands, an area that can only be reached by boat. But each day, the oil is inching closer to the backwaters and canals farther inland, where fish spawn and shrimp bed. And earlier this week, work began on a permanent solution. It involves drilling a second relief well some 18,000 feet below the seabed, but that could take up to three months. Brett. Chris Gutierrez, live in Venice, Louisiana. Chris, thanks. As President Obama and his team try to stay ahead of the Gulf spill, questions are being raised about the past and present relationship between oil industry executives and the administration. Senior White House correspondent Major Garrett sorts through the specifics. More than a year before BP's Deepwater Horizon exploratory well exploded and set in motion the massive oil spill now threatening the entire Gulf of Mexico, the Obama Interior Department exempted the oil company from intense regulatory scrutiny. BP was granted what's known as a categorical exemption by the Minerals Management Service, which reports to Interior Secretary Ken Salazar. That means the exploratory drilling project and plans to deal with a spill should one occur evaded several environmental, scientific, and public reviews. They went cut corners and went straight to the drilling uh, into the other activities and, and didn't even take a look at some of the mitigation and remediation measures uh, that are now uh, upon us. These exemptions are widely accepted for the design of trails and national parks, the purchase of park benches, or paying for federal road projects. But... When you're talking about oil drilling uh, and when you're talking about uh, uh, the major impacts uh, to wildlife, to fisheries, uh, this is precisely the type of action that needs the public involvement. The White House refused to call the environmental exemption for BP a mistake, deferring to a complete federal review of the entire oil spill. That's part of the investigation. I don't know the answer to that. A 2008 Government Accountability Office investigation found some Minerals Management Service employees had sex with, took drugs with, and accepted improper trips from oil industry representatives. The new Interior Secretary vowed to clean house. The White House has a problem now, and the problem is, is the Department of Interior really cleaned up? There's another angle. First as a senator, then as a presidential candidate, Mr. Obama was the top recipient of BP campaign donations, more than $71,000. You may not be able to find some sort of smoking gun hanging out there, but this illustrates the point, the larger point, of how corporations try to influence a political process. The White House dismissed any connection between BP's campaign donations and the Interior Department's handling of its deepwater rig. I would say that's 
it's silly and ridiculous. In the 2008 election cycle, BP gave members of Congress or candidates for Congress more than $390,000. Second on that list, Republican John McCain, who received $36,000. Interior Secretary Salazar, who was then a member of the Senate from Colorado, received $2,500 from BP. Brett?